everyone, I'm James Milan, and this is Driving Forces, a series, uh, that is a public affairs series here at ACMI that focuses on people and their projects um, that are basically focused on social impact and activism. And today I am joined uh, by two excellent examples of that. Um, uh, basic, well, first of all, Baya uh, El Odi is the founder of Connect, Care, Share, or Kokasha. And uh, we'll find out what that is all about very shortly. Um, thanks for joining us, Baya. And we are thank also joined you. by Chef Nadine James. Um, thank you so much for being here. And my thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's find out what is Kokasha all about um, and where you know, what is the impetus for it? So if you wouldn't mind taking us through that by it. Sure. Um, thank you again for having me here. It's uh, a pleasure, an honor, and also an honor to have Chief Nadine, uh, our Jamaican Master Chief here with us. Uh, so Kokasha, it's basically an online platform that connects you, uh, our audience today that are at home probably Tired of eating the same pasta with some tomatoes that uh, are missing. Hey, I cook delicious. that all the time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, and probably some ice cream, but uh, probably you see missing your local small restaurants with, you know, some African food or Jamaican food, some tasty flavor in your, in your days and the small moments. So basically that's your situation today and on the other side if you go out and you take a walk any part of the world right now you will find the small businesses in your community that make the identity of your community close so all those local chefs that are amazing such as nadine also owners of small food businesses are lost and not any revenue um and the the the, the Kokasha, what the what what does the platform is simply create those human connection between people that are missing each other. You're probably missing the amazing dishes that Nadine is <laughs> <laughs> giving you and offering you, and Nadine is missing our revenues. So what it does is simply that is creating this human connection through which you will learn from Najin everything about Jamaican food, about, you know, curry in Jamaica, and you will prepare your meal, you will savor it with your family, with your children, etc. And Nadine will earn some revenues to go through the crisis, but the best of all is that she will also earn the skills that will enable her tomorrow to thrive into the cooking um, digital industry uh, because people are enjoying more and more cooking at home and even cooking uh, together from different parts of the world. We have groups from somebody from Germany, London, US and all together cooking with our friends. So that's really Kokasha is creating um, this connection between people that are missing each other and whoever don't see each other in this time of pandemic because each one is locked down in isolated words. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll just remind our audience, we're talking about connect, care, share, which that turns into Kokasha. Kokasha. Exactly. So, we'll so you connect, referring to that. you care to each other and you share together a moment of learning of the other day also uh, she was putting Bob Marley, so also dancing together during the cooking <laughs> lesson. So, you know, it's a moment of, of humanity and that's why we are missing today our human connection and we are aware more than ever of our human independence. So yeah, that's the idea yes. of Kokasha. Absolutely. And before I, I uh, 
bring you in, Nadine, I just want to uh, note, uh, because people who watch our public affairs series would, of course, be very aware of how much uh, everything that we have been doing over the last number of months has been colored by the pandemic and uh, mm -hmm. the changes and impacts of that. And most of those, frankly, have been pretty grim, pretty negative stuff, stuff that concerns us all. And that includes the fact that, as you have said, businesses are just plain shut down. Businesses that are sure about the products and the services that they provide, but are also about that connection that you were just talking about. And especially, of course, restaurants, coffee houses, places where people will go in order to have that social connection, as well as eat some excellent food or drink some fine coffee or libations or something like that. All of that, as you said, has been snatched away from us on the whole. And instead, we're, <laughs> we've gotten mighty well acquainted with our kitchens. So a wonderful kind of recognition on your part, Baya, that this is, this is a moment that, need, that requires this kind of um, new innovation. So Chef Nadine, tell us a little bit, first of all, about the restaurant, like in normal times, you would, we wouldn't even be able to talk to you right now because you'd be busy in, your, in the kitchen of the restaurant, I'm sure. Tell us a little bit about it. So, um, um, hi, thank you again for having me and having us. Um, it's a very pleasure to be here. And about um, my restaurant, it's a startup restaurant and I cook out of my my school like they they rent you a space and then you cook and then you deliver that meal so wow. they order it and then i cook it in my school and then i deliver um, bring it to them so um i would be busy and um when the shutdown it was really emotional it was really like what am i gonna do now like nobody can go anywhere and this was a platform that really, you know, they give me an opportunity to expand my skill and at the same time give me a revenue by staying home with my children. So it's all coming just one big wow, you know, that in this time we still can come together, as um, Bahia said, we still can communicate as, you know, even though it's virtual, but it's still something to look forward to by knowing that I'm going to cook, I'm going to Jamaica or I'm going to Africa somewhere that right now I'm in, but I'm out at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. And um, Baia, how exactly does it work? So you've both mentioned that the gain here is both for the audience who learns how to cook different dishes um, and just, and even more than that, as you said, music can be part of it and other, other pieces of culture are shared. Um, but you've also mentioned that it, it brings revenue. So what is the model for Kokasha? What, what, what is it exactly that you're doing? Yeah, so basically what uh, we want to ensure is to, to maximize really uh, the, the recognition that we owe to, to our chef. Uh, so they are directly paid. Usually the customer tell me, how do I pay? I say, this is the way you go. It's to the business actually uh, of, the, of the restaurant and it's per participant. Uh, I put a minimum because what the, 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 the spirit of Hokasha is like, Nadine has a big talent, a huge talent. It must be recognized. So you will have to pay a minimum price. You will not be like here taking the massive discounts. No, we must recognize this talent, not only today in terms of times of COVID or COVID, but in the long term. So that's really the vision. So the way it works is like you will have a minimum. Can I, can I, pay. I'm just going to, I'm going to interrupt you for one second, just to say that's a great, great point. I think that you're making, and I just want to reiterate it, and that is the, the reason for having a minimum has as much to do with respect for what it is that Chef Nadine brings here as in addition to the fact that, of course, she has lost, she and the other chefs have lost their revenue, so therefore this is a good way of, you know, at least partly uh, addressing that. But that respect piece uh, is, is so important. So thanks for bringing that up. I just wanted to 
highlight that? I mean, at the basis, she needs a health insurance. She needs, so basically the point is like, she's, you, if it, tomorrow you take a class with her, I will say, she's on the stage, she's the chef, I am the assistant tech. So, <laughs> so basically, so that's the way it works. There is a minimum. The minimum two people they will pay uh, it's thirty dollars per class. So it's a minimum of sixty, and then each additional will pay an extra. Uh, usually it's one hour for two people, and then depending because it's all about the experience. If you are a group of four, we will extend, um, of course, the time to really have the full experience. Uh, but then it's still we will not make discounts either even uh, just for big big groups of five and then we will really make sure that the the chef gets also the the, the fair part um but uh that's the most important so that's that's the way it works uh we are in the process of setting up as an ngo we have been like a few weeks running so and uh, then that's the aim but all the model is saying a minimum part is covered and then we may allow some flexibility depending on big groups which is normal right because uh, then her hour is more valorized right of course and so what i am imagining and please correct me um what i'm imagining is chef nadine you basically set up a camera or your or your laptop or whatever it, with a good view of your own kitchen um, and then that is also the case with whoever it is who is taking that class. They've got it set up in their kitchen. And then you basically take them through the making of meal or meals. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. The, you said it um, just right. We, they have their um, camera set up. I have my camera set up. And just like so we are talking right now, that's all uh, but it, the camera will not be on me the camera will be at the food because the food is the important part at that moment mm -hmm. after we introduce ourselves so what you're saying is just right we both have our camera on and we both like step by step this is what we're gonna do this time this is all it's gonna take how long it's gonna take and stuff like that step by step and you know tell our story and feel comfortable just mm -hmm. feel like you're in your own home. So I want you to feel that you're in your own home, even though you're talking to a friend. Because right there, I'm your friend for that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so somebody is, is basically paying for your time and your expertise for, for an hour, let's say. Um, at the end of that hour, will they have a single meal? Will they have uh, the way to make s several different meals? How, how do you work that out? So um, every meal that we are preparing is for four people. It's for four, um, four in the family. We, we do a minimum of four. So if you're going to cook with us, it's, um, you're gonna have, you can feed four people, four of your kids, um, you and your husband and two kids or whoever you want to do. It, it's up to you, but it's for four people and they know that because we put it on, she put it on the website. But mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, well, yeah. go ahead, go it's ahead. It's a menu. I just want to say also, I think, uh, how it, it is. So it's four people. Mm -hmm. You can adjust. You can make to six people yeah. or whatever. And then mm -hmm. uh, Najin will, will provide you the quantities, the servings. But each menu has two dishes. So that's what we provide, two dishes. And then you have the instructions to do it as many times as you want. So right, of course. Cool. Yes, you know at ACMI, uh, where 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 we work, uh, we uh, have members and we have interns, and our the way that we teach all the time how people how uh, to to help people learn how to make video and TV is we do it all hands on, right? We we put the cameras in their hands and we and we have them, you know, really get used to it. That's what we have found is the best way of learning. You guys are doing the same thing, right? You're doing yeah. experiential learning so that you're taking somebody through the process with your guidance, and then you're basically teaching them how to cook. Uh, and yeah. therefore, they can then do it, uh, you know, forever afterwards, and it becomes yeah. quite the bargain, right? Whatever it was they paid mm -hmm. for that hour. Um, so that's a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful model, that's for sure. Um, has it, 
required any changes um, for uh, like, have you had to learn how to do anything new, Chef Nadine, in terms of, you know, taking these classes on? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I never do video. It's something that is always in my heart, but I never did it before. And so when um, Bahia um, present this to me, it was amazing. But what I love about it that she didn't, she never like, teach you one day and say, you're on your own. She take it step by step because she's a woman that strives to be, to be better. So every lesson, she will look at it and then, you know, she give you the um, right, like this, this, that, stand this way. Just like what you guys was doing, um, preparing me for this uh, meeting. So I learned to, to cook on, a video um, on a live stream like I learned to do that I learned to take pictures I learned to to fix the camera a certain way I learned I learned a lot of skill that I never have before I knew about this program and it's a it's amazing it's amazing yeah and how uh, but yeah to go back to again kind of the operations of Kokasha how have you found chefs like chef Nadine or have they found you um, how is it, how is this, and then also how do people learn about what it is that you're doing? Yeah, so basically what I did is the first time uh, that the idea came when I was taking a walk in the, in the streets and started to cry because I was really missing people that were my families in the small restaurant. As an international student, you know, they, are, they end up being your, your family, the, you know, Moroccan cooks, etc. cetera. Um, I sent an email. Honestly, I sent an email to a friend. I was like, look, I had this idea uh, from one side, I'm seeing you. And then from the other side, I'm talking to my professional friends who are, if, you know, tired of canceling their summer friends and eating the same. So then they want something new, exciting. And this is a toll on their well-being. And then it was simply sending an email. I reach out, um, uh, some associations too, so the Woman uh, Empowerment Association in, in River, uh, the um, uh, um, Boston uh, Kitchen, the, the Wealth Kitchen uh, in, in Boston, so also to recruit, and uh, that's the way it came. So for example, Nadine, it was also, I think, an email that came from Whoever, and then somebody connected me and then I onboard her. Um, but also um, I want to say that if Najin is he here, uh, is also uh, because she is very talented. She puts a lot of effort. Uh, I always say, I only give you a tool. I only give you advice. I am your coach. But then she's the one working until 1 a.m., reviewing her recipes, reviewing everything she has done, and sending me everything to review and work with her. So I just want to recognize that I reach them out, but then I just give them training tools, mm -hmm. but it's up to them. And if she's where she is today, it's because she, she made her herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank uh, you. No, no doubt about that. You've got to have some talent to work with um, in order for this to all, you know, to, for this to all come together. You were mentioning that one of the first kind of organizations you reached out to was a women's organization. Um, is this, uh, is Kokasha's work basically centered on women uh, chefs or chefs of both genders or what? Honestly, it was uh, it came by coincidence. For me, it was like, I am going to help whoever is most in need. I do not care about genders. I do not care about race. I do not care about anything. And you know who responded? Women from minorities. If you look at our chef, they are Jamaican, Nigerian, Moroccan. Why? I will tell you why. Because those immigrants are those who are building our local communities and made, make them alive. So, you know, you read all those articles about, you know, how can we call immigrants illegal? And they're, they're the nurses that are saving you in the hospital just to be saved. And I'm just like, 
why? It's just like, because they're the one bringing you the value in your daily life. What do you want to say? So the answer to your question is like, no, it came because it, it's the reality. You're seeing what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yes, truer words uh, cannot be spoken. And again, an yet another example of how, in fact, immigration and welcoming immigrants into our communities just enriches, uh, enriches those communities. You know, it actually, it's a key to us all growing, uh, not in fact, uh, well, in my opinion and those of others, uh, a, a problem, that's for sure. Um, and it's interesting though to hear that basically you started out, hey, you just got the word out however you could, mm -hmm. and it just turns out that the responses have come uh, so far um, from women chefs who are working, who, who are also have immigration or immigrant backgrounds. Um, what, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious, and again, because this, is, this series is called Driving Forces, we're curious, what drove you um, to, to undertake this particular project and I suspect work that you do more generally. What, what, what is the, the work that you generally do and how is this connected to that or where at least does the impulse come from? So uh, everything honestly started by my, everything starts with my own, own, own background. So I was born, I grew up in, in Morocco and um, from a quite modest family. So I spent my childhood uh, playing in the streets uh, of Casablanca. And I enjoyed those moments playing, you know, climbing the trees, playing with stones. And, uh, you know, uh, because of Lottery of Life, and I call it Lottery of Life, uh, I, I had access to good quality education. And uh, I honestly, so from an early age, the, the divide in this world, because I was going to a school, which honestly I didn't like, so it was very posh and you see those, I'm Moroccan, so you see the kind of elite immigrants, which is Morocco was before a colony. So basically from an early age, I found myself in the nexus of, of our socioeconomic divide. And the goal when I left, the country to study to work abroad was to bring back the skills to wherever place needed needed the skills basically to bridge those divides uh, through innovation and because i i leave it myself so that's a little bit the purpose that that drove me into this kind of of, of social impact is my friends in the streets of casablanca were more talented than me and they're probably today in the streets. The best talents today, the one that brings you your small joys in your life, that make your life, you don't see them. So the whole spirit of Kokasha and everything that I try to do in my life is to bring up in the scene those unseen people who are just behind the, the honestly, the shadows of our socioeconomic divide. And they're behind the shadows. And we are talking about perhaps 99%. Mm -hmm. And that's the aim is to say how in a moment that is this crisis where we are more aware than ever about the socioeconomic divide, the toll on our societies, but also how much we miss each other, how much we are independent and how much basically we, we need each other to really build the basis of our society where tomorrow you will value every person from the kitchen to the garbage collector because you know what mm. if they were not here you will not be alive neither and um, that's something that you that it's all purpose yeah i think you know in a number of conversations that we have had uh over the last months uh we've talked about what the nature of what's been what's now called essential work essential workers um, and a lot of people are, of course, aware of what, how that applies in the health care and public health aspects. But I think people have become, I hope, I guess, people have become more aware and more appreciative of what you were just saying. How many hands are invisibly helping our, us to get through our days with all the small pleasures that we derive from those days. Um, and 
you know, how often those folks just remain invisible. So uh, let's hope uh, if, if there are uh, silver linings to be had through this whole crisis, let's hope that there is a lasting, uh, you know, kind of appreciation for the work done by the folks that you've just been talking about. Um, Nadine, I, I wanted to step back also and just ask you, um, how did you start cooking? Uh, where did it come from? Um, have you, is something you've been doing since childhood? Tell us what your, your own story as a, as, as a chef, what, what is that? So yeah, um, I've been, I started cooking from when I was like nine years old. And it started um, um, with, I used to, this um, gentleman used to be a butcher and he lived next door to my, um, the little cut that my mom lived because um, I'm, a, I'm a, a person of 50. My mom, I have 12 kids so with my father and I, yeah. So there was a lot of people in my home. Wow. So I used to go away, I sneak away and go over there <laughs> at nine just to, to see what he's doing. But the more you help, the more every time he reward you with food, uh, with a piece of what left. So he gave me the inside, the inside of the goat. We kill a goat that day. So he gave me the inside of the goat. And one of the thing, um, like we went home and I said, mom, um, this is what I get, you know, cook. And she said, no, I'm not going to cook. Um, it's too hard to cook. So, because, yeah, because you have to, you have to um, boil it, then you have to strip it, then you have to beat it, and then you have to season it. So it, so it really a is a lot of work, a lot of work. Yes, it takes a lot of work. So I went behind her back to the butcher, asked the butcher how to do it, and then, and, and I come home, cook it, and then that was my, um, my first food, and it was very good. And that's when my you mom were, said, You wow. were about nine years old then? Nine years old. Wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> nine years old so I did that that's when I, I I said wow I love to cook and the passion is uh is real and that give me joy when I when I cook it give me like a piece of sense of joy yeah and and, and are you basically self-taught as a cook did you, was that the beginning of just a, an awful lot of cooking in your life and that's how you've gotten to where you are now or did you undergo so, some uh, training so my um i used to watch my mom my dad and my mom could cook my dad is cut the chef but my mom she's a housewife so she could cook so i watch her and i watch oh like she always tell me nadine get out the kitchen because it's too young but even though she tell me to get out the kitchen i always take time and still sneak and 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 watch a watcher because it's, it was a driving force inside of me, a passion to, to watch what she's doing. Because I see what um, the outcome of the food and what the food can do. So after she cooks, she will have friend over. And then I see that that food bring people together. That food bring unity. That food bring, bring all different type of thing. Love, you know, happiness, joy. And that I cling to that. I cling to that. And, and by clinging to that, it teach me how to cook. I watch her more. I watch her more. And that's how I learn. I keep watching her even though she said not to watch her. And then at nine, I try it and it worked. And then from that, I began to cook it by myself, cooking, cooking by myself. And do you have a child or children of your own, Nadine? Oh, yes. I have four beautiful um, children. Wow, and are, yeah. they watch you cook now, or are, are, are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it become a um, cooking. It become a a real bond for me and my daughters, cause my daughters um live with me, but my sons they don't live with me. So it become a bond. So they don't like my passion, but they love the food. What become my, after my passion? <laughs> so they will... <laughs> So they may not quite share. That, they don't that share. joy you have, but they yes. sure know how to enjoy the food. Right? Oh yes, they do. They do. They um, so they will come and you know talk to me, and then we share together our day and our ideas, and you know we we bond with it. And then when I want my sons to come over, 
I will just ask, um, tell them, oh, I cook um, curry goat today, and I know that they will be right over. <laughs> and yeah. yes, when I want to talk to them, so it 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 be, it, it be now, yeah. It being a, a like a cheese to you know like you give cheese to the um right to, to the, the rats. rats yeah yeah, yeah to the rats. <laughs> yeah uh, we boys we're easy that way that's for sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I was curious um you clearly you have a very strong drive that mm -hmm. comes from your childhood um, that is the impetus for Kokasha and and similar efforts in your life I'm sure. But I'm curious, um, what is it about food for you? Because of course, what you recognized walking out on the street that day was that all kinds of small businesses are being shut down. Um, and uh, you chose this as, your, as the focus for this particular project. Is there, is, is there a reason for that that's related to food and cooking? Yeah, I mean, there were two, Two main reasons. First of all, is that it was is the the, the most impacted uh, sector, as I could see, uh, and is where you can see the big numbers. And um, that's one. Uh, I was looking, really looking to what where I can help. And second, because food, as Nadine said, is bringing people together and. When you look at restaurants that are often owned by minorities, they are inclusive, they are multi-ethnic, they, they are diverse. You mix together, you build memories, you meet, you, you, you meet friendship. Um, and also you, you are more open-minded, you know, it's like you build a bond with other person and it's okay, we are just enjoying the same food and it's just like, this human need of eating bonds us again, despite you being white, being American, me being Moroccan, Najin being Jamaican, we don't really care because the food is just amazing and it's, it's our common ground. It's a way to level the field in a delicious way too. <laughs> that was it. Um, so yeah, my relationship with cook, cooking is, is that is really see the bonding that we have made that we make as a society um, uh, through a meal via meal and that was really something and also in Morocco you know in Morocco we have tagines in Morocco you in, in traditional the, the traditional Morocco not the fancy places we don't have an individual plate you don't have treachery you don't have an individual glass a glass we share everything, share everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have a plate in the middle and you help each other and first you help others before helping yourself mm -hmm. you have yours for, so you know it's just the concept of sharing yes yeah that's i mean it, it's just wonderful modeling behavior right that 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 happens around a moroccan uh you know just a kind of traditional moroccan meal as you said these are these are wonderful uh, ideas and impulses and ways of treating each other that we can bring into other spheres and kind of <laughs> civilize and make uh, make things nicer in a lot more places. Hey, we're going to wrap up the conversation, but let me ask you both um, one last question, which is from each of your perspectives, uh, clearly Kokasha was born from the impact of the virus. At some point, we we hope we will be on the other side of this. Um, what is it that each of you is going to take forward from here or that, uh, well, yes, that, that once things return to normal, um, what is it that, that you think that from your experience now you'll be taking forward practically or kind of spiritually um, uh, into that new normal that we establish on the other side of this? Go ahead, Nadine. <laughs> so for me, oh God, for me, it's a, it's a eye opening and it's a brilliant new way to look at life going on from my vision is to merge um, Uni Cafe with the um, digital life and then br bring it together like um, 
when all everything cooled down, my vision is to still do cooking live in my restaurant. So um and it's all started by the by by Kokasha by if she didn't introduce that to me, I wouldn't have that to go. So I'm taking that with me and go on to make to the future. And um, one of the things, and I'm, this, it, it brought me to know Bahia and she become my family. So I'm taking that too. I'm not leaving that, <laughs> I'm taking that too. So um, I will take those things and I will, I'm just trying to be better. So. I'm taking that and then in the future be better. Mm -hmm. And is there, do you have any idea of when Unique Cafe may be able to open its doors again? No, we, we all think in the same thing because we go by the same news and the same, we wait in, we in the same waiting period. So I, I can never give you a set time because we are waiting for what? Our leaders yeah. have to say. We know the feeling. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, and and how about you, Baya? Yeah. So, for me, Kokasha, um, as I mentioned, is is not something for the crisis. It's something post crisis. That's that's the aim. It's like how do we take size this this crisis as an opportunity to build a better future? And uh, the goal, really, the vision is to build a behavior, a, a society behavior where you recognize the work that is behind the scenes. So my goal is really to say if tomorrow it's business as usual for me, it's not an okay. Uh, coming back to normal for me, it's not an okay because the normal that we build previous to crisis during years and business as usual is one that bring us today a uh, like all the millions of deaths and the inequalities that are increasing and having like this, this crazy toll of inequalities in our society. We don't want this back to normal. At least I don't want and it's afraid me. So the goal is having a normal where, you know, you go to a restaurant and you value the time spent by the person behind the walls and you pay the fair price. The same for any products from a, a bag, from whatever, because you have met Nadine, you have met whoever you have not seen because it's behind the shadow of a wall and you recognize its value in the society. And my hope is that one day as you behave like this as a citizen, as a customer, you will also vote and vote for more rights, more recognition, more protection. Uh, not only for you, but also for the person who delights you each day, but you perhaps don't see. So I want you to see her today, see him, and tomorrow value them while continuing to see them because Kokasha, Nadine with Unique Cafe, you will still see them. This experience is not going, it's going to be blended online yeah. and in person. Yes. That's my yes. hope. That's, if, I, if this is planting the seed for that, I not think it would be heaven for me. <laughs> well, that is a very inspiring uh, vision indeed. Um, we appreciate you guys both taking the time to talk with us today. I've been talking to Chef Nadine James, who owns Unique Cafe, which hopefully will be back up and running itself, but with new wrinkles, undoubtedly. Um, and also with Bahia El Odi, who has started Kokasha. Uh, and, um, and that's connect, care, share, and, um, and best of luck to you both. It's been a, both enlightening, but really fun conversation with you. And um, we, we really do wish you the best. Thank you. And thank you for your work. Uh, <laughs> no problem. And the audience for being, for being there. And if you want to enjoy with Nadine or any of our chefs, we are here to bring you beyond the barriers and the walls and yeah. be delighted many people start eating the food while they're preparing it so we, <laughs> we don't recommend though <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh, undoubtedly we will provide uh, graphic information for how to get 
to Kokasha and to Chef Nadine and the other star chefs in their stable. Um, and, um, and enjoy, enjoy. All right, thank so you. thank you both again. Uh, thank you out and there. Thank you, the I'm James Milan. This has been Driving Forces. We'll see you next time. <laughs>